All right, we're cooking. We're back. We are rolling. We're going to roll again. Take three. What's up, guys? Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com. As always, with me, Billy Cross from anxietyunited.com. It's good to be back again. Yes, again, for the third time this morning. It's yes. A... yes. <laughs> we have all kinds of newfangled technology this morning, so I hope everybody notices it and loves it. Yeah. If you don't, it's tough. We're sticking That's right. with it. Sticking yeah. with it anyway. So it's another Saturday morning, and we're back to do uh, the next in our extended Anxiety 101 series. Mm-hmm. What are we talking about today, sir? We are talking – well, I recommended doing something about, like, restaurants and social situations, like going out for a drink in a bar, you know, maybe parties, stuff like that. I think it's a good idea. I think you're going to have to run with this one because I oh. just don't do it. But interestingly, like, I'm going out for my birthday, so it's okay. – Less than two weeks away. So give me some tips, man. Give me this some tips. Give me some tips. All right. So I, I guess we're going to entitle this one like how to deal with restaurant slash social situation. We haven't figured yeah, out the title yeah, yet. Yeah, we'll figure it we'll out, man. So it's all about like going out to eat. Um, mm-hmm. And it'll probably hit on a couple of different things because there are people who have multiple issues with regard to going to a restaurant or a pub, a bar, or whatever. That's it. We could almost put in concerts and any kind of public situation, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, um, so that's not something you do on a regular. You're saying it's been a while. It's I mean, I did it. I went out. Wow, blah, blah, blah. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I went out for breakfast a few times recently. Like yeah. that was kind, of, you know, but it was way emptier the place was than it would normally be. Like at peak peak dinner times and stuff. So sure, sure. But I haven't been out for my birthday for many years. So I just want to do it, man. I should celebrate it. Jesus, yeah, it's about you time. Be, you yeah. should be out for your birthday. You know that. I'm with you on so that. Don't I. Instead of so, just going to McDonald's drive through The drive through We talked about yeah. that last week, though. Yeah, yeah. Being stuck in the drive through But so, uh, you know, my own personal experience with this, it's not something that I, I mean, you know, I wasn't a fan of being out, mm-hmm. you know, for, for in, the, in my worst times. But I didn't have a specific problem with, you know, like uh, – uh, with restaurants it was just in general for me mm-hmm. but i think the most common things that i hear with people at a restaurant is uh going out to eat is the feeling trapped like that's it you sit down you yeah yeah they feel they can't just leave i think i i mentioned it maybe on a video before where it was like it's it's a battle getting in the place but then when you've given your order like you know that you've got to sit now and that's, oh, that's when yes. it always used to be for me like i'd make that decision I'd sit and think about what I'm having, and then it's like, I know as soon as I order, I've got to stay. That's it. Because a lot of the places over here, like the pubs and restaurants, you would go up to the checkout and you'd pay. Yeah. Like, there's no waitress service. Or there is in places, but the places I used to go, like the dark and dingy bars, you know? (laughs) So you'd go up and pay, you'd order your food, and then you've got to sit. Otherwise, you're wasting 20 quid. Right, right. You you bought, you know, you bought fish and chips and just not going to eat them. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's all yeah, we eat, baby. Like bangers and mash. That's all I know. <laughs> I'm out now. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> so, so yeah, but um, once once you'd made that decision, I'm ordering. Like we're sitting. Then it yeah. that becomes the the tricky bit. But then I used to get a thing like when I'd eat as well, because there's obviously changes in your body when you're eating. Yeah, yeah. Like I'd always get hot and sweaty and feel a bit dizzy. Maybe I don't know whether it was me overthinking or whether it was actual physical changes that are happening sure. in your body when you're eating. It's probably both. I mean, you know, if yeah, you're feeling yeah. anxious, then you're going to get those anxiety symptoms, the hot mm-hmm. and the, the sweating and all that stuff. And then when you're eating, let me think. I mean, there are some physical yeah, changes, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. when you're eating. There's no doubt about that. But And then probably they just get magnified by the fact that you were yeah, feeling Yeah, that's it because you're concentrating on it. Yeah, exactly. So um, I think – so there's that thing where, okay, now you're trapped. People always say, well, I feel trapped now because I have to sit, especially if you're with a larger group of people. You know, yeah, if it's yeah. just you and your significant other or you and a friend, that's one thing. But if it's you and, you know, there's yeah, yeah. 16 people because you're at a birthday party or something like that, it gets even tougher. People feel even more trapped. So there's a thing that says, well, I can't leave. If I have to leave, I can't leave now. I'm sort of trapped. The mm-hmm. second thing that I've heard was the is the um, what if everybody's looking at me, mm-hmm. you know? So that's that fear of embarrassment or being judged. I don't know if that's yeah, yeah. That, if that's kind of a thing for you, but uh, and then the third thing is that whole eating people who you know what if I choke? What if I? Mm-hmm. They're actually get anxious about eating in front of people, which isn't. I don't know if it yeah, necessarily. Yeah. It's weird because there's so many different yes. ways that you can go at this. Like that. Yeah. That for me, like a fear of choking, has never been an issue. 
but yeah, yeah you're right. They're, you're right. There's some people out there that that is the big thing. Yeah, they're terrified to eat in front of other people. And mm-hmm. I think that could be – that's almost like a phobia by itself. Somebody yeah, who's yeah. afraid to eat in front of other people doesn't necessarily develop panic disorder or agoraphobia. They would just mm-hmm. avoid yeah, yeah. Uh, eating in front of other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the third one is people who have the emetophobia. They're afraid yeah, of, yeah. of being mm-hmm. ill, of throwing up yeah, and vomiting. Yeah. Um, and so the eating just plays right into that. That's a tough one, uh, mm-hmm. you know. I, I have never dealt with that myself. Yeah, I, how, how do you expose yourself to that? You don't. And so we'll have to talk about exactly. you know, yeah, yeah. it a little bit. Some of these things you cannot really expose yourself to. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, what do you do with them? But so have you, have you ever, the choking thing is not a thing for you. The getting no. sick thing is not a thing no, for no, you. No, no, with me, I've, I was talking to somebody yesterday talking about this very subject. And it's like, it doesn't matter where it is for me. It could be anything. Like I went to the doctors yesterday and experienced major anxiety. I was telling you yesterday, weren't I? Yes, yeah. You know, so I went through that exact same process that I would if I was going to eat at a restaurant or if I was going to a supermarket. It's exactly right. the same process. Okay. Like it does, for me, it's not it's not a case of where it is. It's a case of what it is. That's why I think. Does that make okay. sense? Okay. Yeah, no, no. I, no, I get it. So it doesn't matter that you're in a restaurant or the yeah, doctor's yeah. office. Yeah, it makes no difference. The same, the same thing. I would, would bet for the majority of people who are watching and listening, that's probably that. You know, mm-hmm. eating out is just another... It's just another thing, another challenge for yeah, them. Yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. probably based primarily on the what if I panic and I am trapped mm-hmm. and I can't escape and it's not safe here. So um, that stuff you can you can certainly address in just about everything we've ever talked about. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, that's, it was perfect yesterday. Like that was – it was exactly the same process of yeah. what you would do with any of these things. Like I was freaking out when I was in the car park outside, went in, walking around the – like I was pacing around the waiting room, yeah. freaking out. The nurse called me in. I went in. It was like just a health check thing. And when I came out, I'd accomplished everything and I felt great. And I was just pacing around the waiting room, like just chilling out. I wanted to stay in there until it was zero on the anxiety level. And I did. And it was that feeling again, the same as when I walked around the castle, the same as when I did anything. When you see it through, the same principles apply, man. Right, right. So it didn't matter, uh, you know, in the end. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the takeaway from that. Right, right. And I killed a pheasant on the way to the on the way to the doctor's surgery, which wow. freaked me out. So I was feeling really dodgy. I had to go and pick my little one up from school. Yeah. And I, I was feeling like tired and just questioning. I don't want to go to the doctors. Like I was arguing with myself saying like, yeah. I don't even need, need to go to the doctor. It was just a health check because I've signed up to a new surgery. Yep. Like, and I was just thinking, I don't need to go. I'm not going to go. Then I hit a pheasant and all of a sudden... I sw- I woke up and it was like shit. Like concentrate wow. on what you're fucking doing. Pay attention to the road. I felt way better, way more alert, but I was still freaking out. But so yeah, I killed now, a bird. Well, my condolences to the pheasant and his yeah. family. Um, Funerals next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I will make a charitable donation in the name of that pheasant, whoever she, he or she. A was. couple of turkey drumsticks. So did that Can put you in a more anxious state? Or did it that was, kind of like weird. snap into like, oh, I got to focus on some shit now? Yeah, yeah. It so it woke me up, so I was more focused, but I was still feeling the physical shit. Yeah, and like then it, that was, it might was be weird. a slightly upsetting thing too. Like, oh crap. Yeah, it was weird. It was weird. Yeah, like because my daughter was in the car with me, and she was like, "Did oh. we just hit that?" And I was like, "Yes." Yeah, I yeah. It. yeah. Can't Oops. sugarcoat it. Yeah, yeah. It's That's dead. That. The circle of life and all that. Um, doesn't usually involve it diesel engine but that's okay <laughs> so, well okay so that's fine so i think in the end so your story about getting to the doctors yesterday and you know having that initial panic and losing it in the waiting room but then once that was over you just you were yeah, good yeah. took it's over exactly you know. it's exactly the same as i would feel if i was going to a restaurant or i will feel on right. my birthday i'm gonna right, feel right. exactly the same i'll freak yeah. out on the way there i'll get in there i'll do that ordering thing i'll probably have the peak of the anxiety then and yeah. then it'll start to subside if I sit with it. If I run out of there, then it's game over, isn't it? You, you not the did right way. a video a while ago. It's probably over a year or two ago now where mm-hmm. you did that. You went out. I want to say you went out to breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that one? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah I did it a few times. Yeah, yeah. I remember that one. And I remember one of those too. And it was that is exactly what happened. Like when you – that thing. And I remember you, you narrating it like, well mm-hmm. – you know, when you placed your order, you were at that peak of like, yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of feel like I want to leg it out of here. But uh-huh. 
you know. But then by the time the food actually came and you're eating, it was yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nothing. It was fine. That's it. That's yeah. it. It always subsides. You just got to sit with it. Yeah, yeah. So that's I think in terms of like if you're just having a problem with. There's nothing specific about the act of being in a mm. restaurant or a bar or a pub. It's it's just the fact of being out out of your safe area or mm -hmm. whatever the heck it is, and you think you have to escape. That's again the lesson is you just have to sit with it. Yeah, yeah. don't add to it. It will subside. It might not go to zero. I mean, for mm -hmm. you it went to zero because you're you're quite experienced now. <laughs> just a bit. Well, that's okay. Uh, but, yeah. but that's normal because you've been at this for quite a long time. Yeah, if, yeah, yeah. if you're new to that whole thing, like it, it might not go to zero, and you uh, you may spend the entire evening, you know, feeling agitated and uncomfortable in that restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Or at that pub, but but the bottom line is, if you just let it be there and don't react to it, it might mm -hmm. not be the most enjoyable evening of your not, of your life. Mm -hmm. But um, the next time you do it, you know, it'll be a little bit easier and a little bit easier. And I would say, so if if a restaurant or a bar or a public place like that. It's just part of the bigger picture as you're working on everything better at mm -hmm. the supermarket, better at going to work, better at all of those things. A restaurant and a bar will naturally become easier to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, although if you're primarily working on driving and work and school and like those life things and, and the restaurant is something you haven't done in two mm -hmm. years, you'll likely fear it because yeah, oh, yeah. I haven't done this. What if I can't, I could drive now, but what if I can't sit in the restaurant? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You'll have those are natural thoughts to have, but it'll be easier than it would be if you went from completely housebound to, you know, yeah, yeah. Restaurant for three hours. So, 100%. yeah, I think it's just like anything else. As far as the other stuff, this is the tough stuff, like fear of choking or fear of mm -hmm. vomiting or, or just the, the fear of just being in social situations. You're, have you did, been social anxiety isn't really necessarily. It is now. It is oh, now. really? Yeah, yeah. Really? Okay. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because it's through not doing anything. That's what it is. It's just the unknown now. It's okay. becoming the unknown. Right, right. That could be. That could be. But I think this people... is doing stuff like this is helping though. Like taking live calls on the stream and like sure. to, I'm talking to way more people now off stream. Yeah. Like just from the group and that. I'm yeah, chatting yeah. chatting to people properly and so that's helping. So it's just the, you... the face to face thing. I don't do it enough. Yeah. But do you find that as you're communicating with more and more people, that social anxiety thing is starting to feel a little bit less? Yeah, I guess. It's weird. Oh, I'm I'm just weird, man. I'm just weird. <laughs> like, Hard. if I am face-to-face -face with somebody, then I can hold a conversation and all that. But I do tend to go inside my own head and start thinking, like, oh, I feel a bit giddy. or So yeah. I'm just questioning myself. But right. I'm fine. I'm fine socially. Like, I can hold a conversation. I'm a master of small talk, you know? You are. You're very witty. I mean... <laughs> Obviously, as we could do, you know, I mean, you're hella funny, so uh, that, that's cool. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah, you should take it. It's good. But I think the um, that social anxiety <laughs> thing, and I think that like people who are afraid to eat in front of other people, there mm -hmm. may be specific fear of what if I choke, and, and there are specific things they're afraid that might happen that are food related. What if yeah, I get yeah. sick? What if I choke? Uh, uh, that I get, but just the general feeling of like, well, I'm anxious being around other people or in a, mm -hmm. in a crowd. I don't want people looking at me. I mean, eating as crazy as it sounds. And I have, I've ne I have mean, do I look like I miss a meal? So I've never, you know, Say nothing. <laughs> I've never, I've never had a problem, you know, with, with that thing, eating in public. Mm -hmm. I didn't really have social anxiety, but everyone, even for me that where that's never been part of the anxiety complex. Every once in a long while, I was sitting there with somebody, whoever it is, and, you know, you're eating, you're sharing a meal or something. And, and the mm -hmm. thought occurs to me, like, this is the strangest thing that we do. Like, we, you know, we put stuff, like, in us. <laughs> yeah, like, just it's just... Feed, feed. Right. It's just the strangest, like, if, if there was an alien came down and it was, like, watching us. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. What are these What are these things uh -huh. doing? This is crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, there was a thing and now it's not there. What happened? Oh, it went yeah, in this... Yeah, where's it going? That thing, yeah. So, mm -hmm. sometimes I do think that. And I can understand mm -hmm. then maybe why people would view eating in public as especially vulnerable. Yeah, you, yeah. Know, you could maybe what if you get like food on your face or you drop something on your shirt or like you look awkward. Mm -hmm. I, so yeah, I can yeah. see where if you're socially anxious or you have social anxiety. So it would be, it'd be more of what other people are thinking when they're looking at that gravy on your chin or right. you know, that's what it is. Yeah, it's an, emba it's an embarrassment thing. If it's that fear of being embarrassed or judged, you mm -hmm. know, if you're not terribly confident or you're feeling that people are judging you, I would think mm -hmm. that eating in public is probably a super vulnerable place to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, because we can look silly when we eat, but that, but everybody looks that way. I don't know. Uh -huh, nobody looks uh -huh. cool necessarily when they're eating. Yeah. <laughs> Which it's so interesting too, because well, now you're kind of back in that world now a little bit. But 
if you know, especially on a date, I love hearing people talk about like their their date restaurant strategies. Yeah, yeah, like, no, what's a bad idea? Don't well, that, right, dinner. like a lot of people, I've, I've, I'm going to say women. I hate to say this. This is just my own personal experience. Women tend to say that, mm-hmm. like, I don't want to eat the first time I meet meet a guy. Yeah, 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 I like yeah. to go for a drink, but I don't really want to eat anything, because just in case. Because I guess it's that thing where you can't look cool eating. Nobody ever does. Mm-hmm. So, but that's all right because we all look the same. So what's yeah, the difference? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's the difference? So I don't know in terms of it, how do you get over the fear of being in a restaurant? If it's just part of the overall anxiety complex, you just have to work on everything. Mm-hmm. Like you say all the time, you work on all of your issues, and and the rest will kind of come along. But I think it's just something you have to just start doing. I think I was thinking about this morning, like because we said we was going to talk through the steps of how you would do it. Yes. So I was thinking like it's the same rules for like the supermarket. You'd perhaps just get in your car the first time, be prepared. Mm-hmm think about it then go and yeah. maybe sit in the car park there then the next time go to the doors mm-hmm. next time go in maybe go to the bathroom next time go in to have a drink maybe if you yeah. can do that you know what yeah. i mean and just build up to it if you need to take those steps or just go straight in i, I think it. yeah i think that's an individual call depending yeah on yeah how exactly terrifying it is to yeah that's it that's it but yeah, yeah you could probably do that just go and sit in the parking lot the car park, yeah yeah you know, for a while. Mm-hmm. or or maybe go first to a takeout mm-hmm you know, mm-hmm. where you could go in and stand there and just stand in the anxiety, order your food, wait for it to be prepared, mm-hmm. you know, then, and then you're leaving. So that yeah, that's yeah. a good intermediate step also. Mm-hmm. Take out, take away, whatever, whatever you call it where you live. Take away. Take, take away. away. Is that a thing there? That's take away. We call it take out. But um, that's a good intermediate step. And it forces you to kind of stand there and wait for the food to be prepared. You have to stand there to wait to order. You have to stand to wait. You can't just run out unless you want to pay and then leave without your food. But I've got a question. Yeah, go ahead. Like, who goes to the takeaway anymore? It's all on just eating it. Jesus, they've even ruined that. <laughs> Wait, who go- all right, let me think about that. Who goes to takeaway? I here. I think a lot of people do. Oh, really? I'm not sure. I mean, I, you know, I what's ta- what's takeaway for us? Takeaway is like a, like a fast food. Yeah. If you're not driving through yeah, and like shoving a hamburger in your face while you drive, yeah. but. Uh, a fast food and then there are like for us we have delis delicatessen is in new york at least in the new york uh-huh, area uh-huh. big big deal and our supermarkets like all of a sudden our supermarkets have become like full-blown catering like yeah yes yeah, establishment i don't know if you guys have that there but you walk into a supermarket here now on long island in new york area in a lot of the rest of the country in the u.s they have that already mm-hmm, which is now mm-hmm. getting it like we're behind in supermarket tech here i don't get it but it's a, a lot I, the, it's amazing the number of people i see that walk into a supermarket now and actually go right for that section and then, yeah yeah and they're the, buying dinner the, already prepared like they're in a restaurant uh-huh. they're just putting it in a bag and taking it home so yeah, yeah. you know i think that's a decent intermediate step it forces you to sit and wait a little bit. Takeaway here is like a Chinese or an Indian or. Oh, sure. Pizza. Sure. We have that too. Yeah. yeah. But, but now, you know, at least if you live in a more, you know, urban or even a suburban area, like, do you have Uber Eats? I don't know if we do or not. I don't know. We have Just Eat. That's what Eat. I use. Or whatever. Right. So at yeah. least here, you know, in Uberville in the US, like now mm-hmm. we have Uber Eats and a, an app called DoorDash. Yeah, yeah. So you just sit, you can sit on your sofa on your mm-hmm. phone and decide to order some poor Uber driver to get you a yeah, pizza. Yeah. And it shows up. Pizza. Pizza is takeout. Yeah, yeah, take- definitely. Domino's. Yeah. Domino's. Well, that we can agree on. Well, we can agree on pizza. I can't. I, I'm contractually oh, obligated to not agree <laughs> on Domino's by my ethnic heritage. I can't do it. <laughs> there are Domino's and like Papa John's here in the New York area. I uh-huh. don't know why anyone would go to them. We have like the best oh, right. pizza in the world here. And people. Yeah. So um, anyway, but that's word. neither here nor there. But pizza is takeaway. So I would think, OK, let's, you know, maybe <laughs> take away where we're <laughs> just talking about Sorry. food. Sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah. I forgot that there were people watching us. Um, so take away, take out, probably a good intermediate step. Then, like yeah, you yeah. said, if you find a place that maybe has a bar, you can go and just have a drink and not eat. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can sit at the bar and just get a little appetizer or a snack of some kind. There, there are definitely intermediate steps you could take. But yeah, yeah. I'm going to repeat what we should repeat every time. Like expect to feel badly. If that's mm-hmm. a problem for you, then success in that trip to the restaurant or the pub or the bar is not – Oh, I went and I felt great. That's yeah, not yeah. success. Success is I went and I, I was, felt like shit. Was in, I was in a but panic, I yeah, but yeah. I stayed right. But I mm-hmm. stayed and nothing bad happened. You need mm-hmm. to create, you need to create a memory and a story in your head that ends with, and I was okay. It has yeah, to yeah. always end with, I was okay. As opposed to making up a story because you didn't do it saying, well, mm-hmm. I, I almost, 
you know, I had to run out of there because I almost passed out. No, no, you, we need to, you need to create stories and memories that end with, and it was okay. I think yeah. that, that's interesting you say that because when I've done something like that, like I would always remember the part where I didn't feel okay. Yeah. Even if, if even if I successfully do it and come out feeling great, okay. like the next time I was going to go and do it, I'd always think back and think, shit, like, do I really want to go through that? So it's, it is about challenging that and trying to remember the positive, yeah. like you did it. That, well, that's a good point. I mean, that's a super point. I mean, I think that's pretty normal. Like, who the hell wants yeah, to say, yeah, yeah. I can't wait to go and have a panic attack you know, yeah, at, yeah, at yeah. a restaurant again? Nobody does. But what you should but, really be thinking is, I can't wait to go and feel the way that I did when I just nailed it. More right. positive thinking, yeah. Right. I can't wait to feel the way I did after the panic yeah, started. Yeah. And I felt like, you know, invincible and happy. Mm -hmm. um, but even if you do, that, I mean, that's a powerful thing. It's why we develop panic disorder and agoraphobia. Mm -hmm. The memory of the bad is like really strong so you just have to but that's the that's the crux of this whole process that you and i talk about continually like yep sucks but you gotta do it anyway but as far as the other stuff i guess we're just going to sort of guess and we'll have to wait to see what kind of comments like yeah, in terms, we'll you can't expose yourself to to throwing up and vomit you can't like there's mm -hmm. so if you have emetophobia there's really there's no way to expose yourself to that. Yeah, if you yeah. have social anxieties, there are ways to expose yourself to that. But social anxiety and that fear of eating and looking silly in front of people, you can put yourself in those situations. But that that's where you get into the realm of um, the difference between more behaviorally based stuff, which is stuff you and I talk about all the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Get out the car and drive, walk to the castle, go to a restaurant, go to the supermarket, and more cognitively based stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, there's someone in your window. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Shit. You scared me then. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, more cognitively based things. So, if you have social anxiety or if you're afraid of vomiting or all those things, I freaked out, didn't I? Why did you do that? Poor, poor Billy went off the Jesus. rails. I need a beta blocker. <laughs> Holy shit, there's someone in your window. Oh my god. Did you see I'm gonna guess that's having to guess that's, that's, that's my your daughter. daughter. I knew yeah, it. Yeah. That, dude, that is so funny. <laughs> did you see her before? No, I did not see her before. Oh I was just god. making a joke. Hey, Lola. <laughs> I cannot believe that she wound up looking in the window. That is one of the funniest things ever. Like, holy shit, there really is someone in the window. <laughs> I'm going to watch it back to see if she was there. She was not there. I like, I completely, that popped into my head because I started to notice the window and then that 45 seconds later, there she that was. That was like, it was reminded me of Scream, the film Scream. I was like, <laughs> oh, oh, because I could sort of see an outline in the window. Where is yeah, it? Yeah. Over there. Jesus. That is hilarious. We might no, put this a... bit back in. We'll, I'll do a bit of editing. We'll make yeah, it that, look good. That's fine. Yeah. Cut it up any way you want, I suppose. That's really funny. What the hell She's are we just... talking about? I can't remember. Oh, we were talking. Okay, so let me see if I can get back on just, track. Just, uh, she's just grabbing something, then she's going again. Oh, that's fine. So we could just chill out until she goes. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. Yeah, I'm good with that. Yeah, let the let my t-shirt soak up the sweat. <laughs> Man, <laughs> wow, that was rough. That was rough. Yeah, I I made a joke and it kind of freaked you out. It looked like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so funny. All right, so we were talking about. <clears throat> Back on track. We were talking about the difference between like the behaviorally based shit where you can get out there and <laughs> expose yourself to things and and the cognitive shit, which is there's still yes. exposure built into it. But if you if you are, have emetophobia or you're afraid of choking or you have social anxieties, these are things where you really have to work on, like identifying those thought patterns and changing mm -hmm. them, you know, challenging them, changing them. It's part of CBT. So even if you just have panic disorder and agoraphobia, you would do that. But you can't get off the window, can you? <laughs> I'm just looking. <laughs> I'm sorry. Carry on. <laughs> Carry on. But even if you're dealing with just your run-of-the-mill panic disorder and agoraphobia shit, you're going to deal with some of those things, thought changing. You've been through some yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Going through those exercises. But if you're dealing with social anxiety or that sort of thing, things you can't really readily expose yourself to, you really got to take some time and and start working on those things. Whether you're mm -hmm. using a workbook or you're actually with a therapist or or whatever those things are, you have to take an active role. Like yeah, yeah. It, it's really difficult to change because thoughts are behaviors too. So mm -hmm. if you have social anxiety and so being in a crowded restaurant seems like your worst nightmare, just night white knuckling your way through the crowded restaurant 
mm-hmm. isn't enough because in that situation, you're not going to find like, well, I didn't die. You're not really afraid of dying. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Panic disorder might be. You're afraid of people looking at you and what are they thinking and are they judging mm-hmm. me and am I fitting in and do they like me or do they hate me or yeah, yeah. You know, those are that's all happening up here. So you got to really work on being in that situation and being able to identify and modify those thoughts. Yeah, yeah, and learning what you're in control of because you're not in control of it. Like people right. are gonna look at you, right? Especially right. if you're handsome like us too, you know. You know what are you gonna do? It becomes an issue. Yeah, it becomes an issue. I'm so tired. Of it. Walk down, it's so hard to walk down the street. <laughs> I mean, my scraggly beard. <laughs> so so funny, but I have people yeah. just coming up to my windows, looking uh, through. You know, what I mean? obvious. I mean, yeah, how do you yeah. keep out the paparazzi? Is what that that's what that's all about. You usually shut the curtains. <laughs> it's you and you and Lady Gaga. Same problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> shut the curtains. I do have um, a dress made of meat, so you're right. Yeah. There you go. A dress made. <laughs> In the episode, next episode, Bill's going to wear his meat dress. <laughs> oh my god. Um, so anyway, god. that 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 is probably, I think, the best. I don't know. I think we have a whole lot of advice other than eating out or going to a mm. bar or restaurant it's the same as almost everything else but if you're dealing with some of those other more cognitively based things you really got to like take an active role in, in in working on that like yes mm. i have i'm afraid of being judged or i'm afraid of looking silly and i'm afraid of vomiting or i'm afraid of choking in front of people like you can't expose yourself to things so you got to just you got to take an active role in working on the cognitive part of that you just have mm. to i think mm-hmm. people forget you know yeah they, yeah they, i suppose because we talk a lot about just doing it but that right. is some, yeah, that's a different aspect in it because people right. do ask about social anxiety a lot. But yeah, I don't, I don't really have major experience because my social anxiety is purely linked to a fear of doing something right. ra- rather than I don't really care what other people think. Like I never really have. Yep. So I guess, yep. you know, so it doesn't matter. I know. Yeah, yeah. Which I'm guessing for somebody with social anxiety must be seem so foreign. Yeah, yeah. Like I could sit in a restaurant. I, don't know, I might spill soup in my lap, but I couldn't mm-hmm. be less interested. Look at me, don't look at who cares. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But uh, so I think we were talking about just doing it. If you're dealing with those more cognitive related things, you, just doing it means you got to start taking an active role in in that work. You could do that work too. You could change mm-hmm. your thought patterns. So it's it's a thing. It's an actual real thing. Um, and, and I'll just add to that. It has nothing to do with going and just laying on a therapist's sofa and talking mm-hmm. about mom and dad. Like that isn't it. There's specific types of therapies that are designed to identify, help you identify Oh, now. Oops. I'm thinking that thing again, you know, yeah, yeah. follow it through. And, and you work on those things when you're not in a restaurant in sort of high anxiety mode, you work on it, you know, when you're feeling good, you mm-hmm. have worksheets, you follow your thoughts through to the logical conclusions. You play out the worst case on paper, and then you can challenge that. Well, the worst case is somebody doesn't like me. Okay, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. And you can work through all those things in a logical way as opposed to when you're being fueled by fear and anxiety. Mm-hmm. So that when you get into the that actual situation of being in the restaurant or the bar, you can fall back on those techniques that you've taught yourself while you're in the comfort of your own home feeling okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm thinking this, so that means I have to do this, 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 and this. Mm-hmm. And it, it's super uncomfortable in the beginning, but as you get better, like anything else, you start to put those tools in That's practice, it. you get better yeah, at yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So people do overcome things like social anxiety. They do. Mm-hmm. Like it's mm-hmm. not a life sentence, but – and there you go. So I don't know. What else do we got? I think we could apply this to restaurants, concerts, bar, like almost any public situation. It is, yeah, yeah. And like, like I keep saying, like the doctors thing really reinforced that for me yesterday. Yeah. Because it was, it was just like I know that I'm feeling like this, and I know that I'll feel that exact same thing, whatever it is that I'm doing. So for me, that's my condition. My condition is, well, my issue, my disorder is being in these situations. It doesn't matter what it is. So when right. I'm out of out of the car or out of the house, that's when it's an issue. That so it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. even walk, walking around the castle, it was, that was an issue. Like it, completely different. It's not even in a building. No, but it's the same exact issues. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and my guess would no. be that if you went and did that castle walk, you know, 16 times in the next two weeks, so mm-hmm. that it became boring to you and you're yeah, no yeah. longer anxious, it would actually improve your restaurant situation. Yeah, yeah, definitely. By some measure. Yeah, yeah, yeah it would. It would. So, you know, there's that. But we want to take a look at yeah. some of the comments that people had, you know, you yeah. posted about this in the forum. Let's do it. Um, I'm just starting to... I've stopped sweating a bit now. I see that. I'll, I'll look. Um, let's see. How do I? Laura, Laura Konarski, my friend Laura. How do I get through being in a heavily crowded place without seeing an exit in sight? Like the mall or yesterday. Oh, Laura's in my neck of the woods. Yesterday she was in New York City at Rockefeller Center. And there were so many people. And you're just sandwiched between them searching for how to get out. My, made my anxiety so much worse. I, I think. 
the answer to that question is kind of the same as anything else. Like, why do you think – so, Laura, why do you think you need an exit? Yeah, yeah. Why do you have to – what do you What do you need to get out from? Mm -hmm. you, you, you need to get out from how you feel and what you think. So the object of the game here is to be in that situation where you do not exit. Or mm -hmm. if there's no exit, so be it. Like, there's always an exit. You know, yeah, there's no yeah. place we go into you can't get out unless you committed a crime and you're in jail. Then you can't get mm -hmm. out. But mm -hmm. – Still but otherwise, exit. without seeing an exit in sight, like you must put yourself in those situations where you cannot see an exit. Because if you think you still need an exit, you're why? Why do you yeah, need yeah, to you're exit? Still fearing that. Thought. Right. Well, the you same thing a... happened with me. And yeah. I'm going to go back to it because I'm just a broken record. But no, the it's castle totally fine. thing, like yeah. when I was half halfway round the top of the castle, there was only one way back down. And I, I reached the halfway point and I had that flash in fear. It was like, shit, whichever way I go, I've got the same distance. Yeah. And I, and I was thinking to myself, I need to go. I need to like rush and get out of here. But right. then I, I challenged it. And it was at that moment that it all just disappeared. Like it was mad because yeah, we've, we've talked about that so many times. Like if you, you have that flash in fear and if you act on it, then it just gets worse until you're out of the situation. Right. But I made a different decision. It was just, I ain't running. Like, I'm just going to. I'm going to slow down, in fact. Yeah. Let's just see what happens. Nothing you, happened. You did the opposite of what yeah, your yeah, initial yeah. instinct told you to yeah, do. And so much of this. First time in a long time. First yeah. time in a long time yeah. that, I've, that I've challenged that thought. Usually I would act and speed up and get out. Yeah. No. I, and, you know, do the opposite is like something we've talked about in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. almost the best advice you can give yeah. yourself at any given time. What should I do? The opposite of what I initially yeah, yeah. think I want to do. Uh -huh. So, Laura, if you think you need to find an exit, do the opposite. Stop looking for the exit. Mm -hmm. And, like, panic if you must. Because the object of the game is have a panic attack. at. Ro and I, I understand. Believe me. I've been in Rockefeller Center, especially now at Christmas mm -hmm. time. It is just jam-packed with people all want to see the Christmas displays. And especially they put the giant tree up. It mm -hmm. gets crazy. So I understand that. But the object of the game is if you're going to put yourself in that situation, just then do it. Like, don't do it and yeah, think, yeah. well, I'll do this, but only if I know I can get out. Because why do you need to get out? If you panic, then panic. Who cares? You need mm -hmm. to learn that even even panic, it's not it's not the end of the world. It won't hurt. You won't kill you. And if you just let it happen, it'll subside after seven, eight, nine minutes, and you're fine. Go and look at the tree some more. So Be prepared. Be prepared to panic. Right. Be prepared. Like, you you want to feel that way. I mean, yeah, sometimes yeah. – uh, let, me, let me back up a little bit. Sometimes it's not about – Sometimes you just want to go out. To, we were talking about restaurants. So, you know, mm -hmm. we'll bring it back to that. But, Laura, how do I get a crowded place like a restaurant where you think there's no exit? Once you've ordered the food, there's no exit. I yeah, get yeah. it. You, it's not always exposure. So sometimes, and maybe in Laura's case, like that, that was just what the family was doing. Yeah, so yeah. She, it, she wasn't treating it necessarily as exposure. And I get that. It's not always exposure. Sometimes it's just after your daughter's dance recital and you're going yeah, yeah. for ice cream and that's it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I get it. Sometimes it's difficult to always think of everything as like having a plan and exposure and mm -hmm. I'm doing this on purpose. Sometimes you don't want to do that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, how do I, I think we should have a, how do I fly? How do I ferry? How do I go on the two hour Eurostar tunnel? Yeah, so I need I need help with that one as well. How do I fly? Uh, you know what? We could do that. That's another good yeah, one. Yeah. How do I travel? Mm -hmm. I could definitely speak to that. I yeah, could yeah. definitely speak to that because I, you know, from like a little bit afraid <laughs> to leave the house, sometimes <laughs> a lot afraid to like uh, go anywhere now or come see <laughs> you if I had a passport. Yeah, um, yeah. And Laura says yes. Or how do I go on vacation? We'll do that. Maybe we'll do that next week. That'll be the next <laughs> one. How do I travel? Uh, let's see. That was about all we got. Is that it? We had no love in the comments today. It's too early for these well, we people. Had, we did. We had love, but it was early. It was early in the U.S. <laughs> when you posted, for sure. But that's fine. Uh, so ne next week we'll do travel. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What I've else got experience got? with that. Anything else you want to add on this? Um, I don't know, man. I'm enjoying this. I'm Me enjoying too. It's it. working out great. Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah. You were until the whole window episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's kind of threw me <laughs> off a bit. It was good exposure. It was. Uh, I mean, honestly, yeah. I would have had no idea. If you didn't say that it kind of freaked you out, I would have never known. Yeah, yeah. Never known. So <clears throat> nobody could, no one would have ever known that you got a little flustered over that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's okay. We'll have edited I'm a master that. of disguise. You are. You are. You're like a chameleon. So yeah. I, I guess next week we'll do travel. We, this is pretty good. We're 37 minutes in and we're going to take some edit, take some footage out. So it'll be less, less than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But we're, we're, like if you're watching this now with us, like we're having a watch party, so if you're watching it after, then I apologize. But yeah, hello, <laughs> hi. 
It's not uh, fucking live, okay? Everybody thought it was oh, live. Oh, that they is were so asking, funny. Yeah. Everybody thought it was live. <laughs> I, was getting, I was getting messages after saying, oh, I thought it was live. I was like, yeah. no. Yeah, I'm people here getting watching you. Like, Why aren't you answering my question? <laughs> Why are you not acknowledging? Isn't that live? What are you vaping? <laughs> what are you vaping? <laughs> Let's just, this is, Billy's not going to tell you what he's vaping, and I, I'm not going to tell you about dying my beard, so that's the way <laughs> <laughs> eternal mysteries. I'm gonna put like a frequently asked questions thing on my website. Maybe. <laughs> well, number one, what am I vaping? <laughs> Q A. None of your business. Go away. <laughs> so too funny. Uh, All yeah. right, I think we're good. I think that's it. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna kill we're the recording. Good. I mean, we kind of, we kind of, we kind of got it. Yeah, I'm pretty. Wait, about. wait, wait. Before you go, before we go. Yes. Subscribe on YouTube. You're going to upload this to YouTube, yeah? You know, I, I am. I'm going to do both of them. I'm going to upload next week, last week's now. So I'll be okay, a week so we'll be a week behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's cool. So whichever place you're watching this, whichever channel, mine or Billy's, hit the subscribe button. Damn it! I'm not going to put it on mine. This oh, you're not going to put channel. it on yours. You no, are. No. You are quite. You are quite the good friend. Yeah, Billy's yeah. help me out. Get to that th we're, magic we're thousand. You there, mate. We're getting you there. So like, you hit the thumb. What are you supposed to do? Hit the thumbs up button. You got to like it and subscribe. Yeah, like, comment, leave a comment. Hit comment. the subscribe button, but hit the little bell icon, and then you'll be notified every time Drew uploads on his channel. See? There you go. Yeah, there you go. See? I'm going to hire you. You're going to be my YouTube marketing <laughs> consultant. But, like, really, no, truly, like, wherever you happen to be seeing this, whether it's YouTube or Facebook or whatever, my website or wherever, just, and you have a question, leave it. Like, we'll always yeah, see yeah. it. Definitely. Jump in. We'll, we'll try to or answer topic, it. Or suggestions for different topics. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a question, you have a topic, suggestion, mm -hmm. throw it in there. We're, but we're both going to see it no matter where it is, and we'll jump yes. in. No matter how late it is next year, we'll still answer the questions. Exactly. So, awesome. Just All right. I'm going to end it here. See you guys Do later. Ta-da. Yep. Stop recording.